everybody. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, if you're celebrating it, happy Christmas also. This is a presentation which accompanies the Hanukkah in your home kit. If you've already worked through the recipes and songs and preparation materials, then this is the presentation to show either in your church or in your home. I'm going to take about 18 minutes to tell the story of Hanukkah and you see my Hanukkah menorah here and we will light each candle as we go through each point. So I hope that you'll be able to follow this along with me and also maybe you have the PowerPoint downloaded at home or else you'll simply be able to follow what I'm going to be saying. So let me share my screen with the PowerPoint uh, that you should have already received and uh, it will also be uploaded onto the uh, website Jew in the Pew at YouTube or the Jews for Jesus uh, website, Jews for Jesus UK. So we're talking about Jesus and how he celebrated the first Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights in uh, the New Testament, reading from the Gospel of John, uh, verses uh, 22 to 30 of chapter 10. Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name, you name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep here might listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. Well, there's a special blessing that we share at this season. It's called the Shehechianu prayer. And I'll say it in English, in Hebrew, and uh, invite you to read it with me. And then in English. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu V'Kiyamanu V'Higianu Lazman Hazeh. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us life and has sustained us and has brought us to this season. And a special blessing for kindling the first light. And uh, what we do is we light the uh, servant candle, the front candle, of the first of the, nine tea, of the nine candles. And then for each light, uh, each day of Hanukkah, we light an additional light. And we light the candle first. And say the blessing, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolom, Asher Kiddushanu, B'mitzvotav, Vitzivanu, Lahadlik Ne'er Shel Honaker. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in Yeshua, in Jesus, in whose name we light the Honaker lights. And then the first point which we light the first candle with is about the meaning of this season. I'm going to hold my little candle here. Hanak is from the Hebrew word with a ch, mind your neighbor's neck if you're in church, to dedicate or to renew. And in Greek, in John chapter 10, it's translated enkaineia because kainos means new or brand new or renewed. And this is a feast of renewal, a feast of dedication. And it occurs on the 25th of Kislev. And you may say, oh, that's interesting. December the 25th is Christmas. And yes, there is a connection. And 
very often the two dates coincide, although not this year. And Hanukkah is the Jewish alternative to Christmas. It's a, a winter festival. It happens in the dark. Jerusalem would be all lit up by wonderful menorahs in the temple and in everybody's home. And it's really like the Jewish alternative to Christmas. Now, if you're Jewish and you believe in Jesus, you get the best of both worlds. You get eight days of Hanukkah presents. My children did. And you also get Christmas presents. So what could be better than celebrating both festivals. Now, it's actually a festival about how the Jewish people overcame their great enemy at that time, Antiochus or Antiochus Epiphanes. Epiphanes means a wonder or a manifestation because he claimed to be a manifestation of God. But the Jewish people made fun of this and said not Epiphanes, but Epimanes, which means a madman or a maniac. And he was king of Syria. He inherited the, uh, the empire of Alexander the Great. The Seleucid rulers inherited Egypt and what was then Israel. And he wanted the Jewish people to give up Hebrew and talk Greek, to give up the worship of the one true God and worship the gods of Greece and Rome. He went so far as to sacrifice a pig on the altar in the temple to Zeus, the god of Greece and Rome. This was terrible blasphemy, and he forbade the study of the Torah, the Jewish law, practice of circumcision of the baby boys, and the keeping of kosher food. And the Jewish people even looked to the prophecy of Daniel 11, verse 31, speaking of the abomination of desolation in the temple as an illustration of what Antiochus was trying to do. But there was a revolt, and uh, this is my uh, third candle, the Maccabees. You may know the handle Oratorio, Judah, Macca Judah the Maccabee. Uh, Mattathias and his seven sons, the oldest son was Judah, led a revolt in about 165 before Jesus. And this began in Modin, which is in between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv today. It's a background a backwater town in the desert it was then but amazingly they managed to recapture the temple in Jerusalem and defeat the much greater armies of Antiochus and Judah was given the nickname Maccabi which means my hammer or the hammer of God and so the story goes that when they got back to the temple there was only enough oil in the temple for one day's light. And yet the Ne'er Tamid, the eternal light that burnt on the seven branched candlestick in the temple had to burn continuously. And according to Jewish tradition, we're not exactly sure, but the Jewish tradition reports this, one day's worth of oil lasted a full eight days until they had time to consecrate more special olive oil to be burnt in the temple and so it's a miracle of renewal a miracle of God's provision a miracle of light the eight days light came from one day's oil so as you are at home or in your church and you light these candles you want to reflect on God's miraculous provision of light for our path and for our well-being and we say the blessing for miracles. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sheasa Nisim LaAvoteinu, Bayamim Hahem, Vazman Haze. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our ancestors in those days during this season. And of course, as believers in Yeshua, we recognize an even greater miracle that the light of the world, Jesus of Nazareth, was born in a stable in Bethlehem to a humble Jewish girl, Miriam, and her husband, who was rather surprised by it all, Joseph. And uh, we celebrate an even greater miracle today. And so there's only one way in Jewish life to celebrate, and that's to have a party and good food. And if you've done your preparation, 
you should already have some delicious potato pancakes, latkes. You should have some delicious donuts, uh, sufganiot. The recipes are all there in the in the preparations pack. And you'll have some chocolate money to play the gambling game called um, the dridle game with a spinning top. And I have my uh, bridle here. I won't spin it in front of you, but uh, you basically spin it round and whichever num whichever Hebrew letter it lands on, you either win some, lose some, double your money or put money in the pot. And of course, as it's chocolate money, uh, it's not such a bad thing to be able to gamble with the delicious chocolate money. But the main thing is, it's the story of all Jewish festivals. Our enemies, our enemies tried to kill us. God sent a deliverer to rescue us. We won. Let's eat. And that's the story of most Jewish festivals. And it's the story of Hanukkah today. And even more, the story of Christmas. So we're reminded, and this is my sixth candle if you're keeping count, of the meaning of light. You know, at the very beginning of the Bible, we read that God said, let there be light, Yehi or, and there was light. And the primeval darkness and chaos was vanished because the light shone in the darkness and the darkness could not overwhelm it. And of course, light is a symbol of God's presence, the pillar of fire by day and the, the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of uh, cloud by day was the symbol of God being with his people in the Old Testament as they wandered in the wilderness and they had the tabernacle, the portable tent in the wilderness where God's presence dwelled. And when we look at the light of the candles, we think of God's glory, his holiness, his guidance, his brightness, his encouragement to us. And of course, we think of Jesus and his love for us that he came to us as a human being born of a virgin and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. So on number seven, the seventh candle, we really think about the darkness that all of us are living in until we find Jesus. Each of us needs to know God in a personal way. Ooh, I don't know if my light's gone. Yes, it's gone. Each of us needs to know God personally. And my people, the Jewish people, are still waiting for the Messiah. And the question that they ask Jesus in John chapter 10, are you the Messiah? Now, they are waiting for someone to come and deliver them from the Romans, just as Judah the Maccabee delivered them from the Greeks. But actually, Jesus came to deliver us from far more than our political enemies. He came to deliver us from sin. He came to deliver us from the darkness that gets in our hearts and the darkness that's in our lives and the darkness that we all suffer from. We've had such a year of it with COVID and with lockdown and with social distancing. And many of us have had a real darkness in our souls because of this. So we need to celebrate the fact that Jesus is the light of the world that takes away the darkness that casts out the darkness and fills us with light. I am the light of the world, he says. Now, I know and you know that many of us, our friends and neighbours, are still waiting to know God's saving light and saving power. And that's where you and I come in, because we have a wonderful message at this time of Christmas and Hanukkah. How do we find true light in our lives? And this is my eighth candle here. Where we read in the Gospel of John, in him, in Jesus was life, and the light was the light of humanity. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, overwhelm it, understand it. Now, my story is that I was a nice Jewish boy growing up in London, attending synagogues, celebrating Hanukkah, enjoying all the presents and the party and the celebration. But until I asked Yeshua, Jesus, into my life as my Lord and Saviour, 
And until I became a disciple of Rabbi Jesus, I didn't know the light and I wasn't walking in the light. So the invitation for you and for me and for our friends and neighbours is to ask the light of the world to come into our hearts this time of Hanukkah and Christmas. And that's why the ninth candle, the one that I'm holding here, oops, that one went out. see if we can do this. Never before done on Zoom, I have to tell you. This ninth candle has a special name in Hebrew. It's called the Shamash candle, the servant candle, because the servant is used to light all the others. Jesus is the servant who wants to put a flame of love in your heart and my heart. And we need to receive Yeshua, Jesus, as our suffering servant. We receive him in our hearts and he renews or begins our faith. And my prayer for you and my prayer for me and my prayer for my people at this time and for all nations is that the light of God's love in Messiah Jesus will set our hearts on fire. Maybe your heart isn't on fire right now, then ask God to just cleanse you and renew you. Let the Holy Spirit rekindle your love and rededicate your life in his service. It's been so good to share with you the message of Hanukkah and Christmas. And I'd invite you just to click on the link uh, in this final slide to have a special greeting from Jews for Jesus in the UK. And we would love your support and prayers at this time as we share the good news of the Messiah with Jewish people and everyone else. If you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, please go to our website. If you'd like to support us financially, we really appreciate your gifts. And we would love to continue into this new year with you, knowing that Yeshua Jesus is the light of the world. May I wish you a happy Hanukkah and a joyful Christmas as we celebrate the birth of our Messiah, Yeshua. And may I bless you with the ironic benediction that Moses gave to Aaron and the priests in Numbers chapter 6, verses 25 to 6. In Hebrew, I pray, Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'hunecha, Yisa Adonai panavelecha, Vayasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his light upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you that peace that passes all understanding. May the light of God's presence and the peace of God be with you and all those whom you love and share with this time of Hanukkah and Christmas. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much and God bless you.